is most of the 25 offices. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We are at VMworld 2013. Joining me next on the whiteboard is Amir Sharif. He's the Senior Director of Technical Marketing at Violin Memory. We've been working with you guys on a uh, test where we're able to achieve over 2 million IOPS. And a couple of things struck me as a result of that. First of all, I think the test is very interesting because we didn't just do a direct attach and see how big of a number we could get. We created a shared environment, which I think is practical for today's uh, sort of clustered uh, environments like uh, Oracle and certainly VMware and things like that. Uh, but then what came out of that, I think, is how important what I call the community of vendors are in achieving that result. So could you take us through the sort of the architecture and, and let's talk about what the importance of the different aspects are? Absolutely, and thank you for pointing that out. This benchmark was designed to replicate what customers actually do in their data centers. Typically they have a cluster of servers connected through a fiber channel switch connected to our flash arrays, all memory flash arrays. And what we did for this particular test, we had six violin 6616s. These are SLC flash arrays, and they're connected to a brocade 6520 fiber channel switch. That's a Gen 5 switch. And the brocade was connected to Dell R910s via Emulex LTE 1602 HBAs, and those are also Gen 5 HBAs. So you have a clustered server environment going through a switch fabric talking to a memory array. So what's interesting about this is uh, these, uh, obviously, as you said, are Gen 5 technology, which are uh, 16 uh, gigabits per second uh, performance. Uh, but your guys' boxes are 8 gig connect. Why would the 16 gig still be so important in this type of environment? Well, if you're a customer, you want to build for the future. Make sure that the infrastructure you implement today is relevant for at least the next three to five years. And what, what happens here is we've built a network where plenty of bandwidth goes through the server through the, through the brocade switch. What we do in a violent, uh, in a violent fabric here, while in storage, is deliver enough bandwidth to be able to actually saturate all eight gig links. But what we did was bonding with multiple eight gig links. So effectively one 16 gig link became two eight gig links and that delivered traffic. Okay. The other thing that was interesting is that obviously this is a, a fiber channel configuration. Uh, why fiber channel? Why not some of the other uh, protocols that we see on the market today? About 90% of our shipments on the customer side are fiber channel, and we've asked the same question ourselves. And really, the reason is threefold. It's reliability, it's throughput, and the fact that it's an accepted fabric, it's been around. People know that it will not fail. And, and there's some latency advantages to it as well, correct? That's exactly right. It's so a much lower latency fabric compared to iSCSI. So for the test, we ran a, a product called FIO, right? And, and so how, walk me through how that executed. Sure. So we ran the FIO instances generating load on the Dell R910s. And each, each Dell saw 16 LUNs being exported through the HPA. So we had all these connections going in. For the sake of simplicity, I won't draw the line. Mm -hmm. Going through this switch fabric and then talking to the violent arrays on the other side. Now, we did a lot of tuning and balancing to make sure that we got the best performance. For instance, we made sure that the server and the array were balanced on the same ASIC, there are four ASICs on the Brocade 6520. We did a lot of work on the Dell servers, making sure that the HBAs were on the proper uh, PCI Express slot, because if you get it wrong, you get into timing issues or NUMA issues, you don't get the same throughput. So a lot of thought and study went into building the infrastructure to make sure that we could get the maximum throughput. But basically, what you had is a server talking to, through a switch network, talking to our storage arrays. You know, it's funny, as I talk to users, I, I think that they think that we all have these super secret labs in our uh, facilities that we're doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, right? This, this effort took a, a fair amount of logistics to put together and, and some learning, like you said, on, on your guys' part and, well, the industry's part on where to put PCIe cards and things like that, correct? Getting the utmost performance takes a village. It takes great partners like Emulex, Dell, and Brocade and they're working with us to teach us what their architectures were and help us actually tune the fabric. It also took a lot of experimentation to know what the limits of, let's say, a new architecture on a Dell R910 is and to be able to engineer around it to make sure that we get the best performance. So it does take a lot of tinkering, but all those learning lessons can then be documented and handed off to the customer so they get the best performance out of a similar architecture. So they won't have to tinker. In other words, we exactly. do the tinkering for them. A reference architecture will go out and they can build exactly the same thing so their applications run faster, the business executes better, 
and they do so at a lower cost. Right. So let's talk about key takeaways here. I think we've really nailed the the uh, the importance of the village, right? Because I, what I get really worried about in the industry is I see people, you know, kind of get very focused <laughs> on putting really fast storage, which obviously is important for you guys. But that storage is only going to go as fast as the connections in between it, right? So this village is really important. Let's also talk about uh, the relevance of two million plus IOPS to a guy that only needs 500,000. What, what does he get out of this? Okay, so let's go with your first question. Mm -hmm. Why do we need this fabric? What's mm -hmm. the relevance of this fabric? So if you have very fast storage and you don't have the proper infrastructure, your bottleneck becomes a network. Now what we saw with the Brocade 6520 Gen 5 switches was a lot of throughput, a lot of fabric, and that allowed it, that traffic from our very fast arrays, that each one of them, our marketing specs, uh, basically say each one of them can generate four gigabytes of data per second. For this particular benchmark, we exceeded that. But imagine four gigabytes plus coming from each one of these. Well, you need to have the infrastructure to pass the traffic through. And then you have to be able to put it inside the servers. And well, that's where the Emulex LTE 1602 HBAs came in and the capabilities of the Dell R910 to be able to absorb it. So it's not just a fast storage or a fast switch. You have to have the infrastructure through and through been able to handle that traffic to be able to process data as fast as possible. Now let's go to your second question, yep. which is why are the results important? Well, the peak performance that we saw was 2.33 million IOPS at 8K packets, uh, representing 17 and a half gigabytes a second over the entire array. And you say, wow, that's an impressive number. What does that mean? Well, what it means is if you have a very large transactional database mm -hmm. or a very large random I.O. type of environment, let's say VDI. Okay. What this infrastructure does is enable you to run your business and run it at the speed of memory, at the speed of actuality, Right. basically keep up. What we're demoing in one of our customer sites is a 2000 uh, VDI instance where we're also having a constant boot storm. Now you typically don't see boot storms running inside the business, but the bootstorm generates a lot of I.O. It slows down the servers, slows down the network, slows down the arrays. But with a constant bootstorm, we have 2,000 VDI instances running, and the latency as measured from inside the guest is one millisecond. Mm -hmm. What we're showing is that the cost of a 2,000 seat VDI instance is actually lower than 2,000 dedicated desktops, and it performs better. So better performance, lower cost. Better performance, lower cost. These results are relevant because they show that the business can be accelerated and the cost can be dropped. Right. All right. Well, that's great. I think I think the key thing here, and we'll we'll be detailing this, or we detail this in the report, uh, and talk about the uh, the different scenarios. I know we have some tests where we just have one unit up there, for example, and things like that. So I think there's a lot of value across the board for everybody. But I think the key things is you got to nail the village, and and you've got to be able to. Uh, generate a, ha have a system that can increase density, whether it's more users per database or more VDI desktops or, or more uh, virtual servers, right? To reiterate your point, uh, the test results show a one array and a one server versus uh, scaling out, mm -hmm. and that makes it relevant to customers of any size. Mm -hmm. And to your point, it does take a village, lots of partners, Brocade, MLX, Dell, and Violin Memory, to work together to build a complete infrastructure. So our customers' businesses can run faster at lower cost. Right. All right, well, thanks, Amir. Thank you. George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thanks for tuning in.